Hi, I'm Kendall Miller with Fresh DV, and we're going to be going through a quick tutorial on how to use a light meter with your digital video camera. Having a light meter will let you set your lights on a scene or a set without having to reference your camera's LCD or viewfinder. But before you can use it accurately, you're going to have to set it up with your digital video camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through a real quick calibration on how to do that. Behind me I've got a, uh, one of my slates and if you've seen my slating tutorial you'll, you'll know that on the back of it I like to have a chip chart. And the chip chart basically has three values on this one. It's got a 100% white, a 50% gray, and a black. And what we're going to do is we're going to light this. We've got a softbox set up here. Very frontal, flat lighting. Try and get as many values as possible just straight bouncing off directly into our camera. Here we've got a HVX200, which in this case is going to make this process a little bit more easier. We've got a Brevis on the front, and we've got a um, Zeiss 1.3 uh, 85 lens on the front via the PL mount adapter. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by determining the correct exposure for our camera using the 50% gray chip in the center of our chart. Now there's two different ways to do this and I'm going to show you both methods. The first is on the HVX200 we can actually use the built-in spot meter function to read the value of the gray chip. So I've already got it set up and if you'll look right here you can see that the uh, center marker right here that's where it's going to be reading the light from. If you looked in the bottom left you can see the value is 14 percent. That's 50 percent gray so we want to raise this value to match the value of that center chip. We're just going to open the aperture until that reads 50 percent or 49. Uh, sometimes on these cameras it's hard to get it 100 percent exact but if you get it within one point IRE that's going to be pretty close. Alright, so we've got a 50 percent here reading that center chip and it shows our exposure as being f4. Problem is, what if you've got a camera that doesn't have a spot meter built in? Are you out of luck? Well, no, not necessarily. You can use a FireWire output from your digital camera into a laptop or an NLE. We're using Final Cut Pro, and you can use your scopes internally in your NLE to be able to take a correct reading as well. I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to roll the aperture back down. Over here on our um, laptop, uh, we've got our scopes open, and we're reading the signal through the FireWire. And you can see here we've got th our three different chips. This would be the lowest one in the chart. It's going to be your black. The middle one's going to be your gray. And your one to the furthest right is going to be your white. So using our scopes, we're going to read our measurement until we get 50% on the gray. And I'm just going to, once again, open this aperture back up real slowly. And as I do it, you're going to see the center gray chip rise up. This is the 50% mark right across here. We're looking to center that or put it slightly above that line. So I'm just going to roll it until that center chip is just above, probably somewhere along there. So that would confirm for me that I've accurately placed the exposure of that chip along the 50% mark. The next step is to just check on my camera, and I can see that it's at F4, which is the exact same exposure that we got using the spot meter on the HVX. So now we've got our camera's exposure set correctly for the center gray chip. The next step is to set the light meter. To do this exercise correctly, you're going to need a light meter with Cine functions. We're using the Sekonic 608 Cine meter, and you'll need one that'll be able to handle the similar type of functions. The first thing to do is set up the functions of the light meter to match the frame rate and shutter speeds of your particular camera. We're going to go ahead and dial that in on this one for the HVX200. The first thing we're going to adjust is our frame rate, referenced as 30 currently. That's incorrect. We've got our HVX200 to shoot 24p, so we're going to adjust the frame rate to 24 frames a second. Once you have the frame rate established, the next piece of information you need is the shutter speed. The Sekonic 608 defaults to a 180 degree shutter angle, which incidentally we have set up to be the exact same as our 180 degree shutter on our HVX200. There are different frame rates and shutter angles that you can use, and you may have to consult your light meter's manual to set them up correctly with your particular camera. The next step is to take a spot meter reading using this light meter off the 50% gray. So we're just going to change it from an incident meter to a reflected spot meter, and we're going to take our reading. Okay. At 24 frames a second, we're getting a reading of f2.8, which is much lower than the f4 that we're getting on the camera. So to calibrate them correctly, all we're going to do is we're going to dial in the ISO speeds to get a corresponding f-stop. 
go press ISO 1. We're just going to dial it up. Oh, and actually, it's just one little change from 80 to 100 gives us a reading of F4. Once that's set up, I'm just going to double check it one more time to make 100% that it's correct by metering that center medium gray one more time. And I get F4 again. Checking my black and white values confirmed that it falls where it should be. We've confirmed that the center gray fell back at F4 and the white and black tips fell where they should as well. Now that we've set this meter up correctly to our HVX200, we should be able to take readings anywhere in the room and the corresponding exposure here should match our camera. If we take a reading here, F56 is the reading. So we should be able to dial in F56 on our HVX200 and know exactly that we're properly exposed.